الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I can hear by the sound of your voices with the alaykum salam that you are fasting very hard. <laughs> Allah bless us and protect us Amen. and accept our little ya. It's a pleasure again to welcome Brother Muhammad Junaid Chafika, who is a five times gold medalist, legend of the Kung Fu world martial arts champion we're very proud of him and we're very happy for him to be here may Allah bless and protect him and his family always he's basically doing another a launch of his new book which was the Kung Fu part 2 the untold story mashallah and he will address us and we welcome him and we thank him for being here أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أمرو الشيخ أو الساد إمام حسن والله خليفة في نقش بعد ذكر ورد respect the elders brothers it's an honor for me to be back on the suspicious day of Jumwa at Masjid al Jumwa approximately a year and a half later. So I visited you as a result of the esteemed uh, invitation by our Honorable Chef in October 2019. It is at the time when we just launched part one of my book, Kung Fu, My Journey. In the four and a half months after the book was launched, Alhamdulillah, we managed to have the book uh, launched in Johannesburg, in Pretoria, extensively in Cape Town, and the book also went to India, Alhamdulillah, uh, beyond our expectations. So I want to thank each and every person who actually invested in a copy of the previous book. Part 2, Alhamdulillah, as our Honorable Chair has indicated, is titled Kung Fu, The Untold History. So it follows up on part one, and I am deeply honored that on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, the 10th day of Ramadan, that we are able to officially launch part two at your masjid uh, today. So it is available. Those who are interested, you can acquire your copy today. And I must say that part two actually comes with a traditional bag of Chinese green tea, not the green tea that you get at the shops. I must mention to you, just on the note of uh, health, the green tea you find in the stores, in the tea bags, I'm not making reference to that. This is the traditional herb that has always been brewed in China and Japan for literally thousands of years. The green tea in the stores, you must be very careful of that in terms of your health. It contains excessive fluoride. And as such, it can prol proliferate the spread of free radicals in our system. And those who suffer from um, hypertension, diabetes, those who have had cancer and are now in remission, and even those who suffer from cardiovascular disease, it's not advisable for us to drink tea that contains excessive fluoride. So part two comes with a traditional bag that will last you approximately three to four weeks, Honorable Chef, uh, about, yeah, about three to four weeks. And if you're consuming the in Ramadan, inshallah, there's a guarantee, if strong one, if your intention is good, that you will be able to wake up with the Hajjid Salah, inshallah, Hajjid in the month of Ramadan. But the month of Ramadan, the month of sacrifice, the month of obedience to Allah is an opportunity for us to extensively look at this journey that we undertake every day to reach the master of the universe. We now have an unprecedented opportunity to attain such nearness, dearness and sublime closeness to the Almighty more than any other time if we constructively spend this time soul searching throughout the entire month subhanallah the closeness that we can attain to the divinity and the magnificence of Allah unparalleled at any time in the year physically 
we do not become weaker in the month of Ramadan. And it's something which I've touched on uh, in my book. Physically, we do not become weaker in the month of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. Actually, we become stronger physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. Two world championships, 2012-2014. I made a personal choice, decision, to observe fast while competing at the Legends of Kung Fu World Martial Arts Championship. Muhammad. And this was a lesson for me and conviction that was entrenched in my mind and my soul that I do not need any conversion or reiteration about the importance of the month of Ramadan. We do not become physically weaker. So I made a personal choice, observe fast, 2012. I was in the United States, Ramadan, Fajr was at quarter to three in the morning, subhanAllah. And Maghrib was at like 25 to 10 at night. Oh, and it was in summer. So we were in Mexico City and then in Texas. And it was in summer. <laughs> you know the average temperature in Texas in the desert and even in Mexico City was like 45 degrees. SubhanAllah. And I made a personal choice to observe fast. And this was the lesson for me. Many of my contemporaries and athletes came to me and they were like, Yo MJ man, you are going to go down. You want to fast as a Muslim? While you are competing, you are weaker than us. But while I was preparing for the World Championship in the first two weeks of Ramadan, I was about to leave South Africa. I made a choice to observe fast while I was uh, compete, uh, training in South Africa. So I was doing about 8, 19 hours of training while fasting in South Africa. And my body got physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually prepared for this journey. Wow. And when I arrived there, I decided, I'm going to observe fast while competing. SubhanAllah. Wow. I did the same in 2014, similar conditions. In total, 2012, 2014, six gold and two silver. Confirmation to me that we have no idea about this power of the month of Ramadan. We need to let go of the physical so that we can attain the divine spiritual essence of Khalik. Malik Razik, the most infallible oracle. When we are in touch with the ultimate divine, then our sensory perception is ultimately controlled by the most infallible oracle. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, we are far superior than at any other time. So I briefly touch. I briefly touch on that now in, in part two. The book is dedicated to my beloved father, Sheikh Abdullah Chafika, Rahimullah, who passed away on the 20th of February 2020, before COVID, before lockdown. Uh, our esteemed Sheikh and my father, literally, they went back decades. Teenagers in Cape Town uh, entered the same profession that was dominated by the so-called whites in South Africa as quantity surveyors. So they blazed the path for us, this generation, and the next, inshallah. They were very close. So our Honorable Sheikh a Khalifa of the Naqshbandi Adhikar Order, my father also became a Khalifa of the Chisti Adhikar Order. May Allah grant him a very high place. So the book in chapter 1 is dedicated to him. And I want to say to you, my beloved brothers, if your parents are still alive in this blessed month of Ramadan, regard yourself as being the most fortunate to walk on the face of the earth. Because those of us who have lost our parents, I've lost both my mother and my father. Part 1 was dedicated to my beloved mother, Ummi Salma. Sireen, Amen. Bint Abdullah Chafika, she passed away in August 2019. Part 1 was dedicated to her. She was an amazing inspirational woman. And then my father, six months later exactly, he passed away. So if you have your parents, subhanAllah, and you have not contacted your mother or your father, and this is just a reminder, because we long for those opportunities, but we are no longer given those physical opportunities. Yet we are connected to them because they are alive in the barza. So that dua, that legacy, that turaka, that surah yasin, that surah kaf on a Friday, that loaf of bread, that giving the fasting person a day to break his fast with, the niyyah and the intention should be, Oh Allah, take this ajr, this reward and place it on the arwah, on the souls 
of my deceased parents, Rahimallah. May they be granted the highest place in paradise. May they be placed in the company of the champions of this world and in the Akhirah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the prophets, the Anbiya alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba, the Awliya, all the friends of Allah. From now until eternity. Amen. So if you have your parents and you haven't contacted them and the first third of the month of Ramadan has now practically passed, make a conscientious effort to ensure that bare minimum I pick up that phone. Mom, Dad, or me, Abi, how are you? How are you? Spend a bit of time with him. That opportunity just to touch that hand, kiss that forehead, wash the feet. It's all the opportunities that Allah gives us boundless in the seen transitory phase so that we are able to experience the most divine spiritual pleasures that Allah has kept for us in Jannah. Our object should not be Jannah. That is the wages and the remuneration. Our object is to meet Allah and for Him to be pleased with us. That is the objective. Jannah will come by the way, subhanAllah. Well, we must be excited, you know. But that is by the way, it's the remuneration. When they asked Rabia, Rahimallah, she said, no, that is the wages, you know, that the employee has to pay the, has to pay the employee. I'm interested in being with my Allah. Allah. So we have this opportunity in a month from that. Now, <coughs> diplomatic missions to China by the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu. We must never underestimate the diplomatic missions that were undertaken by the Sahaba. Many of us, we tend to say, you know, the Sahaba were simple-minded people and they were Bedouin Arabs, etc., etc. They did not do much. The bulk of them passed away in the confines of Arabia. That is not true. And we should accord the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the due status that they deserve. If we say it was impossible for the Sahaba to go to China, to be buried in Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, to be buried in the north of Africa, in Egypt, in the north of Sudan, in Iraq, in Iran, in Palestine, if we say it's not possible, why is it that 250 years before prophethood, the Banu Laham, a pagan Arab tribe from northern Iraq, were able, 250 years, were able to travel from the Middle East to China and establish diplomatic and trade relations with China? 250 years before the Sahaba, before the birth of Muhammad Sallallahu So how can we say that it was not possible for the Sahaba to actually go to China, eh? to, for Sahaba to be buried in Turkmenistan, in Baluchistan, in Pakistan, in the south of India? SubhanAllah. How is it possible? Historically, this is the truth. So the first diplomatic mission, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Bokeshu, Jafar bin Abi Talib, Baytali, Hassan bin Hari, Hassa Kizu, Thabit ibn Qais, Gaisi, Uwais Karni, Huwaitsi. These names, and I've given you the Cantonese names of the Sahaba. The chef will translate all of that for you. Or afterwards. Khasa Gaisu, Hassan. These are the names recorded that you will find in historical texts in China. Sahaba, companions of the Prophet ﷺ, who visited China. So initially I went to China to study Kung Fu. And eventually I started conducting this research, living with the Khoi, living with the Uyghur, living with the Kasha, Ushabek, Tajik, Turki. These are all ethnicities in China that are Muslim. And the result of that, over 100 million Muslims in China. Over 42,000 Masajid. The oldest Masjid outside of Mecca, Medina, Jerusalem. And then the oldest masjid on the African continent is not in Egypt. It is in Abyssinia, in Ethiopia, the An Najashi Masjid, because the first flight to Abyssinia caused and was the catalyst behind the first masjid and place of worship to be built by the Sahaba at that time, during the flight to Abyssinia, while the Muslims were being persecuted in Arabia. SubhanAllah. So outside of Makkah, Medina, Jerusalem, and Ethiopia, the oldest masjid in the world is in China, built before 628. Hua Yi in Guangzhou. This masjid was built. What does that mean? Hua Yi in honor of the sage, the Tang Emperor, built this masjid 
in honor of Muhammad sallallahu and the diplomatic mission that was undertaken before the battle of Badr by the first group of Sahaba. Jafar bin Abi Talib, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. Therefore, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Wu Ke Shu, he is classified by the Chinese Muslims as the father who took Islam to China. Allah. Yes. So you will find buildings, boulevards, streets, memorial parks, all named in honor. And you will find across the historical texts in China, this name popping up all the time. Wu Ke Shu. Second diplomatic mission. During the Hilafah of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu. On the route to China, once again, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu stopped off in Bangladesh. So there is a district that is known as Lal Munhirat in Bangladesh. You can concur with our Bangladeshi brothers who are in the area. And there's a masjid that was built in 652 by Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. And it's known as the Abu Akas Masjid. Bangladesh. So on the route to China the second time, <coughs> stopping off in Bangladesh, traveling by sea. Then, the Sahaba, particularly Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, entering China through the south, because that was the king of Wu, that was the seat of power at the time. So Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anh, met father, son, grandson. Gao Zhu, Tai Zhong, Li Zimi, and Gao Zhong, the grandson. And it was at that time that the first Fan Feng, the Muslim quarter was established and built in Guangzhou, where the Muslims were given protection by the emperor to conduct the affairs Islamically, and there was an imam appointed, and he would be the go-between the imperial court and the Muslims. The first embassy. So you will find in the old and new book of Tang, you will find the names Buddha Mahya Hu, the name given to Muhammad sallallahu by the Tang. The chosen last one, Buddha Mahya Hu. You will find names Mo Yi, one of our esteemed leaders, Sayyidina Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu. Alun Harun al Rashid, another great leader. All of these names and many more, we can continue with a series of Jumu'ah lectures. And I will take out all the proof <coughs> and evidence and historical text for you that Islam arrived in China. During the lifetime of Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Classical proof. There is. Over enough. And then, get into the Kung Fu. General Cha Shang Mi, Chinese Uyghur Muslim from the north. He was a general in the Chinese army, developing his own style of Kung Fu martial arts. Like you have snake, eagle, monkey, mantis, etc. Those are all styles, Tai Chi styles of Kung Fu. He, in the early Ming period, developed his own style of Kung Fu. Cha Chuan. So, the name? Zamir. That was his name. Rahimullah. Cantonese? Cha Chen Mir. And the style was named after him. Cha Chuan. The Cha style. And they started teaching this to the children and the adults in the courtyard of every mosque across China. Time to win. Alif, ha, ba, ha, ha, ta, ha, ha, ha. This was the legacy. Such a, such a staggering degree was reached that this became the most popular style of Kung Fu, not just amongst the Hui Muslims, not just amongst the Uyghur Muslims, but even those who were non Khoi, non uyghur even the Han took up the practice of the Kung Fu. I'm not saying, don't please don't go home saying that that guy MJ said that the Muslims invented Kung Fu. It's not true. They added diversity. So this is all found in the book. Right? And today, even if you go to China, you will find that the Chinese Muslims in Ramadan, they will practice the Kung Fu in the courtyard of the Masjid. So many massages. Four grand masters. There are hundreds. I can only list four, which I've elaborated on in my book. Wang Xiping, the Lion of Chinese Kung Fu, 50 years undefeated, deeply religious practicing Muslim who combined the art of Kung Fu with the Najbandi Bikrit Parika. And he was China's most decorated Grand Master of the Kung Fu. Second, Chang Wen Zhong, the first Chinese to become a full contact champion two years in a row nationally while observing fast in the month of Ramadan. 
You, you beat each year more than 35 athletes in order to claim that title. Masyanda, legendary. Also, he was a teacher of the renowned Jet Li. Masyanda became China's youngest ninth level grandmaster of the Kung Fu. Also, national champion while observing fast in the month of Ramadan. And Zhao Changjun, 10 years from 1978 to 1987. He was the all China, all Asian world Kung Fu champion, a Chinese Muslim. This is the history and the legacy. Admiral Chen Ho, Chen Li, the Chinese maritime explorer, Haji Mahmud. He was a descendant of General Nuruddin Zangi, who was the forerunner to Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, Rahimullah. Descendants of Muhammad. <laughs> so, Haji Mahmud traveled to 30 countries in 23 years, establishing diplomatic relations between China and the rest of the world. But in doing that, he was a deeply religious practicing Muslim. What did he do? He built more than 86 massages in Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia. He was responsible for taking Islam to Indonesia, Malacca, and Sumatra. And that was in the early Ming period. This is the legacy as preserved in the history books in China. And I've documented this in part two. Kung Fu, the untold history. I hope that those who purchase a copy of the book, because we've got copies available today, will find some sort of either recourse or some catalyst in this book that can stimulate us in the thought process and the direction of asking ourselves this question right now. What legacy and impact would we want to leave behind for future generations? If we can answer that question, then I think we will live a life of purpose. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to fulfill all our obligations and responsibilities now in the month of Ramadan. And I beseech of the Almighty to grant all of the deceased a very high rank and place in general conflictors. And I want to thank our esteemed chair, our Ustad, uh, Imam Hassan Walilay for extending an invitation to me and I look forward to meeting you. I know it's COVID protocols, you know, I've been meeting so many Muslims now in Ramadan and I've been doing the Chinese way cupping and acupuncture to ensure the flow of qi. Once energy and qi flows properly, then our ability to worship Allah to its maximum, we will really understand it because we cannot grow spiritually if we are physically weak. So I hope to meet you, inshallah, if you are able to speak. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We say, Jazakumullah khair to Ashifu Muhammad Junaid Chafika. Ashifu, am I saying it correctly? MashaAllah, that's a term of respect. So what do you say? Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> well, it sounds nice, you know, something to do about eating. <laughs> but having said that, what an inspiring talk, mashallah. For those who came late, just to reintroduce him, Brother Muhammad Junay Jafika. Oh, sorry, what's that? Shishu. Shifu. Shifu. I'm going to say sushi. No? <laughs> Shifu Muhammad Junay Jafika, a five times gold medalist. Legend of Kung Fu World Martial Arts Champion. Be very proud of him. As I've mentioned the last time, he's also my Gawala. You know what that means? That means our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents come from the same village from India. And his grandfather, as I said, in Cape Town, was the first person, the first Mulasa, the first chef to, to institute and lead the aspect of Maulud Gallery and Tahleel, you know, all these kind. He was in our village area in Cape Town, mashallah. Allah grant them all Jannah to those men. Light in the Kuku. And we thank you again for being here. The book will cost 180 rand, mashallah. Correct? 180 rand. Please, uh, very useful. Yeah, I'm sure you've got part one still left. Limited copies. Limited copies. It will become a gold edition eventually. But thank you, mashallah. I just need to put one point you were speaking about was fasting, subhanallah, and training and competing. I did speak a couple of Jumas ago that the best battles in Islam throughout history, even Battle of Badr, etc., etc., down to Salahuddin Ayyubi, down to the Sahaba, to Spain, they were all done in the month of Ramadan. 
Subhanallah, Subhanallah. It, it jealous, Mashallah. But the one who breaking fast is the Apastin. It is an Afadah Puasa. Thank you again once more. Uh, I wanted you to carry on talking, carry on talking, but Alhamdulillah, you were so captivating. Inshallah, we hope to get you back here just as a continuum. Inshallah. Not only for the book launch, it would be nice to have you. Thank you again.